Today marks the 81st anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor, which pulled the U.S. into World War II. And today, the country and San Diego remembered the 2,000 Americans killed, including at a somber ceremony on the USS Midway. Wale. <laughs> Kim, President Franklin D. Roosevelt gave a speech famously calling the day of the attack a date which will live in infamy. And this day, that means a lot to San Diegans because of the military community here at the USS Midway. You can see things are now closed, but they did spend time honoring that day this morning. Here is a look at the special ceremony crowds ranging from veterans and active military personnel gathered on board the USS Midway to commemorate the day. Survivors of the Pearl Harbor attack and those who lost their lives were honored. Pearl Harbor surviving families were recognized during the ceremony. Carl Zingheim, who is a veteran and is also the USS Midway historian, talked about the number of Pearl Harbor veterans present and how it gets smaller. We're at a point now where we're in this transition to where, sadly, there just aren't that many of the veterans uh, around any longer. Time has, has taken its toll. The event also had a wreath laying and ceremonial flyover. Pearl Harbor veterans were not just honored here on the Midway. One special Pearl Harbor hero was taken on a flight. ABC 10 News reporter Sierra Encinas introduces us to a 103-year-old San Diegan who can remember the moments the Japanese attacked. Right and clear. Yeah. For a few floppy clouds over there. High in the sky, overlooking the coastline this Pearl Harbor day was Navy veteran George Coburn. While 81 years later, he's enjoying the scenery, he still remembers the moments the Japanese attacked his ship at Pearl Harbor. Torpedoes in Oklahoma, they hit one after another. He was on the third deck of the USS Oklahoma when he heard an announcement over the intercom. All hands, man your battle station. Real planes, real bombs. No. I could hear the water pouring in. He says he escaped the crowds and found a porthole, but not everyone was as lucky. He remembers the chaplain on board not being able to fit through the porthole. He said he gave up and he just went back and he helped other guys go through. Coburn swam to the USS Maryland after making it through the porthole. He didn't waste a second when he got on board. I knew what the people had to do that manned the guns and and I started doing part of it. If you ask him if he's a hero, he'll tell you no. I might have been 30 years ago or more, but uh, heroism fades. It doesn't last forever. The humble hero's bravery touched the pilot, Daryl Fisher, who took him on his flight in remembrance of the attacks. Could you do me a favor, George? Would you sign my hat for me? Would you be willing to do that? Coburn wants Americans today to know this when they think about the date which will live in infamy. Don't let it happen again. Sierra Encinas, ABC 10 News. We want to bring back in USS Midway Community Director David Coons. How are we doing? Doing really good tonight. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you. Uh, we just heard a little bit ago from that historian talking about how the number of World War II veterans continues to get smaller. At the event you hosted this morning, you notice that as well. It is. This is the second year in a row that we actually did not have a Pearl Harbor survivor um, um, over the last, you know, and Midway's been doing this since 2004, and we've seen that slow decline um, as time goes by. We're now 80 years plus since the actual attack on Pearl Harbor, and the 50 to 60,000 men and women in uniform that were in Hawaii on that day, we are down to probably somewhere in the neighborhood of a few hundred survivors that are still with us. So. Um, you know, it is a fact of time, but it is still sad. So that's why it's even more important for us today to continue to carry on their legacy of their sacrifices all those decades ago. And one of those sacrifices, uh, one of the heroes that we wanted to talk about is the first World War II Medal of Honor recipient. Tell us about that, gentlemen. Exactly. It was a guy by the name of P uh, Chief Petty Officer John Finn. And he was based not in Pearl Harbor, but on the eastern side of the island at a naval air station called Kaneohe Bay. And, and so the Japanese not only were attacking Pearl Harbor, they were attacking a number of other military facilities on the island of Oahu. Uh, when the attack was started at Kaneohe Bay, uh, John Finn grabbed a gun and spent the whole time shooting at enemy aircraft as they were coming in and strafing and bombing the base. 
He had shrapnel wounds, he had bullet wounds, he had multiple wounds, but yet he stayed at his post the whole time. And a, a year or so later, he was, uh, became the first recipient of World War II of the Medal of Honor. And his legacy is carried on today because there is a USS Navy, or US Navy destroyer, a guided missile destroyer called the USS John Finn. And it is based right here in San Diego. And in fact, the ship is just off the coast of San Diego training right now. So a tremendous way to have one's legacy carried on into the future and forever is to have a ship named after him. And his heroism, or his heroism, uh, warranted having that ship named in his honor. So many names, so many heroes, so many, so many legacies. David, yep. thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. Thank us. you again. Kim, we'll send it back to you in the studio. I'm going to tell that veteran his heroism never fades. We are so grateful, a grateful nation. Thank you, Wale.